kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Let's get ready to I have two different, very different lives. I have Tyson Fury, who I was born and named, who is a, a husband, a father, a son, a very flawed character. Tyson Fury is the best in the division. The lineal heavyweight champion of the world. And then I have the Gypsy King. And that person is unbeatable. I have a very difficult childhood because there wasn't nobody at all. I always knew that uh, even though I love this sport so much, Cameroon is not a way for me to shine. Boxing was bigger in Europe, but where and how to go? We paddled about like three hours, so we were sure that we made it. That's arguably the best moment of my life. The most anticipated combat sports event of the year. We want to bring to the kingdom those major events to be on, on the biggest stage in the world with the world watching. Not any miracle on a true show that anybody can come back from anything. And I don't know what is. It's a dream come true. We have been talking about this fight for over three years. All roads lead to the Gypsy King, and whoever wants to come to the top of the heavyweight division to go for it, maybe. I'm the baddest man on the planet. Let me tell you something. This guy is right now easily the best heavyweight in the world, and he may be one of the all-time greatest heavyweights. The fact that he continuously gets up, he gets knocked down, he has punching power, he's smart than everybody. He is probably the best heavyweight of all time. Tyson Fury is just a superior boxer. Bring him all on! Now the heavyweight division belongs to Tyson Fury. Where does Fury go from here? Who's out there? Who's available? The fight that I really want to see is him against Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua, I'd like to give you an opportunity to fight me for the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World. Joshua and Fury. That's the fight they're going to be talking about. It's officially over for Joshua. Me and you! You get me, little sucker! Rub it! I'm gonna write you off. I definitely believe that the fight is still in play for later this year or, or early next year. Alexander Music has a real shot of even Tyson Fury. You Honestly, bring him to me. Where does that leave the heavyweight division? I'm the baddest mother on the planet. WBC <laughs> title holder Tyson Fury, heavyweight sensation Francis Ngannou. I'm the baddest man on the planet. Sign the contract, you big stiff idiot. Big boys in Saudi Arabia. It's going to be Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou. Let's be real. This fight's going to last as long as Tyson Fury wants it to last. I don't care how much firepower you got. I don't care how much power you pack behind your punch. I mean, there's no other heavyweight out there that's going to step in the ring and beat him. I remember like being a child, my older brother and I, we had to find something to provide, to work. So we went to the sand mine. And at first it was very hard to show us sand. At age nine, I was just so little, but uh, lucky us, we were strong. I was 26 when I left Cameroon. Europe was the, only the continent that you can go from Africa to Europe. Made it in Paris. I saw some uh, parking garage. I went there, just sleep in the floor in the parking garage. It was in the springtime. It was cold, but you know, so it's just the idea to feel the freedom. You don't have nothing, no money, nothing, but you're happy. I was homeless with nothing, but I was happy. Four years, not too bad. <laughs> to get a fight of this magnitude, right? So, which is something that uh, so many people, even though they are great, they don't have it in their uh, lifetime, in their career. This is my first boxing match. Whatever you can say, this is my first boxing match. 
And we are not fighting anyone. Uh, we are fighting the one. I grew up uh, enjoying boxing. I grew up uh, being a huge fan of boxing, wanted to become a boxer, you know, so it's not something new. And now I'm there, but, you know, I feel like I have skipped a lot of steps in, <laughs> in my boxing career, <laughs> right? You have to understand that this is the opportunity that all the boxers out there even those who've been doing this for 20 years, they've been dreaming of. And some guy just will somehow find a way to get it in the front line. <laughs> so. It's a different sport. They look alike, but uh, it's, it's, it's very different, you know. Like when you practice MMA, or do, even though you do some striking, uh, you do copper punches, you kick, you take down, you defend take down and all those stuff. The first two weeks, I have my neck roll, like hurting, my shoulder, everything feels like I never hit. And in fact, in just two weeks, I probably like throw as most punches that I have thrown in my whole 10 weeks uh, MMA training camp. But even when I was training for MMA, I used to spar, do some uh, boxing sparring, so it's okay. Sometimes, you know, I just think of what I've been through, how I get here. Bro, you have to kill me, you know. I'm not coming there to play with you. I'm coming there to fight. But I'm not fighting you, I'm fighting my life. I'm fighting whatever is wrong in my life. It's not been an easy ride, but it's been one that's been worth it. I'm the 44th lineal heavyweight champion in history. I've been given a voice to talk to people who are oppressed and depressed. Because my people have been oppressed for thousands of years. We've been put down, spit on, kicked and punched. So I know what it feels like to be discriminated against on a daily basis. And I'm not about to jump on the bandwagon and do that to any other people. In my life, I've always been proving people wrong. I was proving people wrong coming into the world, dying three times as a newborn baby. It's the drive in the individual that makes us separates them from others. Because I didn't come from a privileged background where I had a, an education or anything. Don't get me wrong, I never come from a poor background. I wasn't, um, I wasn't undernourished or I wasn't uh, walking the streets. Um, but then again, I wasn't uh, the richest man in the world. But I, I didn't need boxing to change my life. I had a good life. At 17 years old, I was driving Porsche cars and brand new Mercedes. And I had a job, I had a good job. I was doing things other than boxing. So, and everyone said to me, oh, you can never make it as a boxer because you don't come from a deprived background. And I'm like, how is that possible? Because why is it that only poor people can box? It's not true. Whether they've got nothing or they've got a lot, it's really unimportant because it's the drive and how much one is willing to sacrifice to achieve your dreams. Why can you not achieve anything if you're given the opportunity? I've been around this game so long, all my life. From being a little boy, I've been in the gym. I've never been without the gym. Gym rat in and out of the gym, running underneath the ring, knocking things over, watching me, dad, and other people training in the gym. So I just feel like it's been a continuous grinding of boxing, 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 boxing. I wasn't interested in going down in history as a great or being a great fighter or being compared to other great fighters. None of that interests me. At any given time, any given champion, any given opponent, I only want to beat the man. I don't want to beat his accomplishments. I don't want to beat his dreams. I don't want anything he has. I only want him as a man to fight me. El mono, el mono, one on one in a boxing fight. And that's it. And when it's over, it's over, let it go. Tyson Fury, AKA the Gypsy King, that is a show. The person that entertains people. 
But Tyson Fury as a person, as a husband, a father, a son, a grandson, a brother, is totally different. There's two separate worlds. There's the entertainment world, and then there's the personal world. I struggled with mental health for so long, all my life. But I disguised it in the professional world for as long as I could until illness overcame. And that's been the biggest struggle I've ever, ever suffered. So now the ambition for me is to stay happy. And as long as boxing makes me happy, I will continue to do it. But when it doesn't make me a happy chappy anymore, I walk away. Probably the hardest sport in the world is boxing. The most lonely sport in the world is boxing. And the, probably the worst sport in the world as well at times can be boxing. So it's not all fun and games. It hasn't always been sunshine and rainbows and big, big, big events and uh, big stadiums. It starts from grassroots and it's up to the individual and the team around them how far they want to take it, how much dedication they want to put in, how much they're willing to sacrifice. As, as a person and I basically sacrificed my whole life and gave it to the cause of, of boxing. Um, don't get me wrong, I've been rewarded heavily on the latter end of my career, um, but like I say, I've had it a lot hard. It hasn't always been like this. Into the world, the Gypsy King and Tyson Fury. But before we go, I want to bring in Francis Ngannou. Francis, for coming in, ESPN, ESPN. Is this your next fight? I'm the boxing heavyweight champion, UFC heavyweight champion. He's in great shape. Look at the muscles on okay. him. And we're going to find out who is the baddest motherfucker on the planet. We're here in central London by Tottenham Court Road at Outernet, just pan along here, along the red carpet wall. Battle of the baddest. The two biggest fighters on the planet. The best man in MMA at heavyweight. The best man in boxing at heavyweight. Two nations, two tribes if you like, collide. Champions collide in the battle of the baddest. It's an enormous event. You've got to remember that this is opening Riyadh season. A huge cultural, sporting and entertainment event that takes place every year for several months, that gets millions of people melding together with culture, creed, colour, all those things. Our guys from our sport are opening that festival. It's like they're opening Glastonbury. It's like they're opening the Cannes Film Festival. It's like they're opening the biggest festivals in the world. Put them all together, and it's probably not as big. This is enormous. You never underestimate anybody and they've all got the same chance. Everybody who faces me has the same chance in winning and that's an, a puncher's chance. He's big, he's strong, he's a champion and he's, uh, he's got a great story. Six years from nothing to being world champion, Francis has obviously proved that the want and the, the uh, never say never attitude wins, you know. Look where he came from only a few short years ago to where he is today on the brink of making fortunes in the world's biggest fight. It's crazy. 
obviously I'm aware that I have a big fight coming up. I'm serious uh, in the preparation, but like having Mike Tyson there, you realize that this is another level, right? Um, I used to watch Mike Tyson on YouTube, and for me, he's definitely the, the god of uh, boxing. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, and he has always been like that. Then I get to the point that I have him around, so you know, I'm like, okay, this is dead serious. This is a movie. They're gonna make a movie out of this. From Cameroon, to France, to here. Just the fact that he said he wanted to meet Mike Tyson, but he didn't know what I looked like. I thought he saw me on television, he never had a television to see what I looked like. He lived in the village where they weren't television, but I guess some kind of way they heard about me. That's how I feel about Roberto Duran and Muhammad Ali, Sugar Ray Leonard. I would be a total criminal. And then I saw these guys. I seen these guys, I said, I want to be like them. The first glimpse of these guys it changed my whole life. I didn't think it would go too well at first. And then um, we trained, I thought we trained hard. And then the next day, we had an interview and I said, how you feel, you feel a little sore? He said, no, I feel great. I said, wow, that's a big mistake. He shouldn't have told me that. So he came back, trained that day, and he didn't say that. So I said, you're sore now, right? I'm not big on power. Power is great, but it doesn't have no value if you can't land on the target. Calm, relaxation. Defense, keep your head and chin low. And that's what heavyweight champs do. They do heavyweight champions when they don't have no more left, they keep going. If it wasn't me, if it was Tyson fighting against somebody else, I think Mike Tyson would be on the side, but on his corner. But too bad for him, I was Mike Tyson loved me more than him. Too bad, Tyson. It's actually hurtful, isn't it? I'm about to cry in my eyes out here. Imagine a newborn baby being named after a boxing champion and then all of a sudden you're named after him, you become world heavyweight champion and then the world heavyweight champion is now fighting somebody else and now the guy you named after is training the guy. He thinks he's in a dream. F***ing hell, I'm definitely in a dream. Do you know what I mean? I'm named after the guy now I'm in the opposite corner to him. 50 years later, 30 years later. Yeah, he's pretty good at distracting people because when you look at him, he really doesn't look like the guy, but I have seen him, I have been uh, ringside watching him and you're know, like, man, there is not, how can this be possible? But you're watching it, not the best looking, not the most athletic guy, but the way that he moves, his skirt, so impressive. You might let his, uh, his body fool you or what he's saying on being out of shape. I don't buy into that. Wow, that was sharp. The biggest reason why Ngannou can't never beat me. He's got too good of a body. The abs, the pecs, the biceps, all that's too much. He would be like, oh, look at me, look at my stomach, I'm a fat pig. I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> you're not the number one boxer, that's what, I, that's what I see. And that's who I'm gonna be focused on. I'm not going to focus on the fat pig. <laughs> I knew from the first moment I touched him, he couldn't beat me because he's in too good a shape. Fat men can never be underestimated. Fat men can fight all night and ripped men can't. And the fat man will always win. That's a fact. I'm sure if I get to connect Tyson, it's going to fall. I have the motivation, I have the dedication. So I'm really out there working my best to put in uh, whatever it takes to get to this fight because, of course, um, I, I want to knock him out. I want him to go on the, on the canvas, to hit the canvas. But let's say uh, it doesn't happen. You know, I still want to get my hand raised at the end of the fight. And that's the most important. And that's why I'm sharpening every tool that I have. I'm doing everything possible that I can do. Well, we all know that Francis has done that punch test thing where he's the hardest puncher ever to have existed so far. So, but I don't think you only need like six or eight pounds of pressure to knock a man out cold. So anyone can do that. Oh, my expectation <laughs> to knock the hell out of him, <laughs> for him to go to the canvas, you know, that's my expectation out of the fight. Francis has got a good punch, all heavyweights do. Especially a man like 250, 270 pounds. They're all gonna be strong and big and be able to punch. Everybody I ever thought could punch hard, they're all heavyweights. 
So yeah, I don't I don't take the punch power thing too too deadly serious. You know, Wilder's the biggest puncher in boxing history. Forty odd knockouts in a row, and when he fought me, he got chinned. So his second fight against uh, Deontay, like he used his weight a lot to lean on him to like basically just put that weight on him. And I think uh, in my case, I'm more able to manage that. I just make sure I get uh, myself in shape as much as possible, you know, work on my reflex, um, work on my muscles memory, stuff like that. But when it's time to fight, I can fight. <laughs> I think I knock him out cold. And as soon as I land on him with a detonation right hand, it's over. Because it's all right being hit off an MMA fighter, but it's different being hit off the world heavyweight king. F me. A man 20 stone at the top of his game, in the prime of his life, undefeated. Oof. 23 knockouts. Victim. Everybody is beatable, bro. You have to believe in it. I have uh, the drive, I have uh, the motivation, and I have all the tools to, to get there. Of course, it will not be easy. Um, um, I have a lack of experience in the, the sport uh, compared to him. But, man, I, I always be an underdog in life. And for some reason, I always find my way out, you know, to preview and to come up on top. Does I get knocked down? Does I get up again? You're never going to keep me down. One of the most dangerous men in combat sport. And Gang used the biggest mm. puncher in history. Tyson Fury has everything to lose. Could he get hurt? Could something happen? There are real stakes in this now. I don't want to be one of his means. I want to turn this mother into a man. I expect him to win this fight relatively easily. Make no mistake, Tyson Fury will leave zero stones unturned, and I will come in at the fittest and strongest and best I've ever been to defeat this man. We are seeing history made. When Tyson Fury steps into the ring, it's a problem for the opponent. Ngannou's fought big guys at heavyweight, but he's not fought someone the likes of Tyson Fury, someone that moves like he does. He has a heavy enough punch to probably knock him out. From one punch, the fight can be over, and that kind of intrigue and that kind of suspense draws people. I have never seen anybody hit with the power that Francis has. I really intend to make my punch useful. I'm expecting a war, and if it's not a war, I'm going to be disappointed. We will see the biggest names in the sport. On October the 28th, there will be a spectacle like you have never seen before. I'm knocking you the f*** out, Dosser. Boom. And you know what as well? Spark out. Slink. <laughs>